and welcome to this Slipstream Fan Forum hosted by WebEx by Cisco. And a big thank you to all of our fans that have been submitting questions for the last week through our Medallia platform. Now, I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined on the sofa today by CEO of McLaren Racing, Zach Brown, and team principal, Andrea Seidel. But before we go to them, let's take a look back at the season so far. Ah. Get my jaw's hurting, Chris Marley, so much. You got to marry by all time. Zach, Andreas, thank you so much for joining today as part of this incredible fan forum. We have had a lot of questions coming through from our, our incredible fans from all over the world. And actually the first question that we have is going to be a video question. So I get you to look at the screen here. This is our first question from our first fan. Hi, I'm Melanie and my question is, uh, throughout the year, what is the race that you most look forward to and why? It's a great question. Zach, I'll start with you first. What race do you most look forward to and why? My favorite race is the Montreal Grand Prix. Yeah. I like love most of them, <laughs> but uh, great city, great history, great success McLaren's had there. Uh, just has a real great racing culture, but I could name about 10 others that are about <laughs> that close in yeah. uh, my favorite tracks. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere in Montreal as well. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Andreas, what about you? Do you have a favorite race yeah. that you look forward to each year? Um, mine is definitely in Monaco. It was yeah. always a dream for me as a as a kid to work there uh, one day. I just, I like the atmosphere there. It's yeah. such an iconic race as well. What was it like for you when you first went to Monaco? Was it? Uh, it was very, very, very special because yeah. it was always a dream to, to, to yeah. work there once. And I still remember when I was standing on the grid there first time as a young and ambitious engineer. Uh, <laughs> great memories. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. We've actually got a question that's come from Franzi, who is in Germany. Uh, so thank you, Franzi, for your question. What will you be doing in the summer break? Of course, we have summer break uh, starting next week. Um, I can't wait to go racing again, he said. So he's very excited about that. But what are you doing in the summer break, Zach? What will you be getting up to? It was German. I thought it was going to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to the Monterey uh, Historics, which oh, is what I always do. Uh, in the summer break, drive mm -hmm. some old uh, historic racing cars and uh, relax in uh, California. Amazing. Any, any rounds of golf in there as well, Zach? I'm sure I'll get a round of two in. <laughs> Andreas, what about you? What will you be getting up to in the summer break? Yeah, I will try to spend as much time as possible with the family, mm -hmm. uh, with the kids. So, yeah and try to avoid uh, any planes and any hotel rooms. Yeah, that, yeah, that, is, uh, of those. that is my ideal holidays. Yeah, amazing. Uh, we've had a question from Jerry, uh, who is from Hampshire here in the UK. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, Zach, I'll come to you first. What is the one FIA rule you would change and why? Uh, good question. <laughs> I would change, uh, you sometimes have them qualifying. Mm -hmm where a driver will go out and will um, create a yellow or even a, a red, uh, which we've seen uh, a bunch. Yeah. And uh, that driver doesn't get penalized, but yet it can compromise qualifying mm -hmm. for other drivers. So uh, not to pick on one, but to use an example, when, when uh, Leclerc uh, crashed mm -hmm. in Monaco, mm -hmm. he retained pole, but yet um, others that were on a run to have a chance at pole, yeah. it got disrupted. And you see in IndyCar racing, if you create a yellow or a red, you lose your two fastest times. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a penalty if if you make a make a mistake. And then of course we've seen in Formula One over the years, one or two drivers uh, maybe do it intentionally. So I guess that would be the rule. Mm -hmm. I would uh, I would change. Yeah, that's interesting. And Andreas, what about you? I would definitely ban DRS. I don't like oh, really? artificial overtaking oh, uh, okay. devices. So you take that away but, altogether? But yeah, but at the same time, I, I recognize at the moment, even with this new generation of cars, sure. um, it would yeah, take a lot of action away at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't take a, see a lot of overtaking maneuvers, but I still have this dream that at one 
one point in the future we have cars that uh, actually don't need these artificial overtaking devices. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, we've actually, oh, this is great. We've got a question from Anton, and Anton is from New Zealand, which is fantastic, and it's about Bruce McLaren. So if Bruce McLaren was brought to the modern day for, uh, to the modern day McLaren, what car from the Boulevard would you most want to give him a drive in? Zach. We've got some incredible Bruce McLaren Well, it would have cars. to be a road yeah. car if I was yeah. giving him a drive in oh, it. Yeah. Uh, I think he'd obviously love the McLaren yeah. uh, Formula One car because mm -hmm. then we could get Bruce and one of his buddies mm -hmm. in the car as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was a racing car, uh, obviously the MP44 is our most successful and Formula One's most successful car of mm -hmm. all time. So given he was an engineer and driver, I'm sure he would be uh, very fond of that racing car. Yeah, that would be amazing to see. Andreas, any thoughts on that? Would you like to see Bruce in any of the cars on the Boulevard? Um, I would definitely prefer to see him in our current car, actually, because mm. that's uh, the baby we are working on as a team. That's uh, what we are proud of yeah. uh, to deliver each year, and it would be interesting to get some feedback from his side. What he it's a good feedback. Thinks yeah. about <laughs> <laughs> Current Formula One cars. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, we've actually got another video question coming in, so if you take a look on the screen here. Hi, Zach and Andreas. I am Mariana Torres from Mexico. And I just want to ask you, uh, what do you think you will be working on if you weren't working for McLaren? Thank you. That's a really interesting question. So if you weren't in Formula One, what would be your other dream job? What would you be doing, Zach? My dream job would be being a baseball player. Oh, really? That's what I wanted to be growing yeah. up. So I guess that would be... Uh, so still be, in sports and... Definitely still yeah. in sports. How about you, Andreas? Is it baseball for you as well? Yeah, definitely not baseball. <laughs> uh, I'd like to be a manager of a football team. Oh, really? Do you have a favourite football team yourself? Yeah, it's uh, Bayern Munich in, uh, in Germany. But I played football myself and I was, uh, played football myself when I was younger and uh, I was loving it. Yeah. And, Not, you don't uh, fancy playing football, you'd, you'd want to be the manager uh, of the team. Uh, I guess I know where my, my talents will be. Hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so we've now had a question from Ivan, and Ivan is calling in from uh, Croatia. Uh, <laughs> this is, if a movie was made about McLaren today, Andreas, who would play Zach? And Zach, <laughs> who would play Andreas? So Andreas, I'm going to come to you first, putting you on the spot here. If it was a Hollywood movie made of yeah. McLaren... Who do you That's think would step into the role of that Interesting question. <laughs> uh, maybe a mix of uh, George Clooney and uh, maybe The Rock. <laughs> right, who would you like to Not play? Sure. Well? I, was, I, I had the advantage of being able to go second and so give it some thought. I'd say Nicolas Cage. For Andreas? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, it's got kind of the same facial hair and all. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, what about yourself? I mean, Andreas, who would you like to play? Is there a, an ideal person you'd want to play yourself? Oh, I'm still a big fan of the Sylvester Stallone movies from the past. A <laughs> uh, mix of uh, Rocky Balboa and, uh, <laughs> and John Rambo. Stallone, you, in an ideal world, who would you? Uh, I like you? Stallone. I, I wouldn't. He wouldn't be first on my list. Who? Who would it be? Um, uh, oh, that's a good question. Maybe Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick and Sylvester Stallone. Perfect yeah, only because I kind of did the whole Ferris Bueller's nice, yeah. school thing. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Except driving a car out the, the back's not a very good idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe not that. Avoid that bit. Yeah, it's a great choice. I would definitely go and see that film, actually. <laughs> so uh, we've had a question that's actually uh, come to you, Andreas, which is from Stephen Gibson from Hertfordshire. How closely do you monitor other teams' upgrades and how quickly do you act upon these things? And what is the general turnaround time from discovery to on-track implementation? Uh, well, I think it's a trick question from the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The team must have lost that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure, competitive analysis is, uh, is part of the sport mm -hmm. uh, we're in. It's important and of course you always see if there's any inspirations you should take on board and, uh, and, and follow up as well. But at the same time it's very important that you first and foremost focus on your own development and you actually trust the own direction of course. Uh, you're going. How long does it take to take inspirations on board and put, it, put them into reality? It depends on the part. It can sure. be within days or could take months if we speak about yeah. total concept changes, for example. Yeah. Uh, Zach, I mean, as well over a race weekend, as, as CEO of racing, are you also keeping an eye on what's happening around you with other teams? Oh, uh, I, I do, but it tends to be a bit more on the business commercial side and yeah. Andreas runs the, the racing team. So mm -hmm. I am fascinated by uh, obviously what others are going on, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I wouldn't um, 
confess to looking at another racing team's floor and having uh, a great idea of <laughs> being inspired what we should put on our floor. So sure. I, I tend to look at the business side of the sport. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, we've had a question which has come from Say. Say is 21 and she's from Texas. Uh, did you always have a passion for Formula One and know that you wanted to be involved in it one day? How were you introduced to the sport, Zach? Uh, my first race was the 1981 Long Beach Grand Prix. I was Amazing. 10 years old. Alan Jones won. Mm -hmm. I remember it like it was yesterday. I still have the same, I have the racing program. So I tend to collect things. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to race, so I wanted to definitely uh, be in Formula One, but the, the dream was to be a race car driver, and uh, that didn't work in Formula One. Uh -huh. um, never really kind of thought I'd be where it I It became close. Yeah, it became close. <laughs> I, I drive the old stuff still. Yeah, I was in a yeah. Formula One car in Austria a couple weeks yes, ago. Yes, yeah. Does that count? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, but I've always loved the sport, and I've always mm -hmm. been a huge McLaren fan. Uh, Ayrton Senna yeah. is the one. Um, kind of started following Formula One in 86, 87, mm -hmm, when he mm -hmm. was winning in the Lotus, and then he came to McLaren, and then the rest is history. Yeah, said it was a hero of mine as well, yeah. Uh, Andreas, what about you? What got you interested in Formula One? Did you ever yeah, yourself? Yeah, I, I never was really into the driving, but I'm, I'm a Michael Schumacher kid, mm -hmm. so I started to watch Formula One really in great detail from around 92 onwards. And uh, that's where the desire came up uh, to study mechanical engineering mm -hmm. at some point and uh, with a clear goal of ending up working in, in Formula One. So that was always your goal was to be in Formula yeah, One? Yeah, from the age of 15, 16 onwards. Amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, we have another question that's been submitted on our video platform here. So if we just take a look on the screen. If you have to pick between any McLaren car or livery, which is your favourite? Oh, good question. If you had to pick between any McLaren car or livery, what would you pick, Zach? Do you have a favourite? Uh, I love what our car looks like now. Yeah. Uh, I thought our golf car in, in Monaco. Yeah, beautiful. Up by the podium was mm -hmm. was pretty awesome. Uh, but if I kind of go back out of the era in which we've uh, worked here, I think the Vodafone mm -hmm. cars and the West cars. Yeah. Uh, McLaren's always had stunning looking. Yeah. They have. Cars, so uh, hard hard to pick one, mm -hmm. but kind of me. I was a huge Mika Hakkinen fan, yeah. so maybe I'd, I'll I'll go with that. Go with that one, the West cars. Yeah, Andreas, what about you? Um, as I said before, I always like our current car because that's our current baby. That's uh, what we're proud of uh, to work on. Uh, in terms of livery, yeah, I definitely liked the the, the the golf livery that we had. Yeah, it looked was amazing. It two years ago. Yeah. Um, but I also like the current one because it has a lot of black, and black means it's light because there's no foil. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's a reason behind it as well. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, we have another video question that's come in, so if we just take a look to the screen here. How do you guys prepare for a race um, as a team principal? Uh, so, Andreas, I think this one is one for you. How do you prepare, prepare for a race as a team principal? Uh, well, there's obviously a lot of... Um, meetings uh, with different groups of the team before race weekend. A lot of documents to read through as well because mm. I want to be on top of things uh, when I'm arriving at the at the track. Um, main focus is obviously on uh, the sporting technical side. Mm -hmm. uh, very important also to align with uh, Zach and with the comps department before going into a race weekend mm -hmm. uh, on uh, questions that could come up from media during a weekend. Um, get a briefing as well on the commercial side, uh, on the marketing side before we go into weekends, simply to try to lead the team during a race weekend as uh, good as possible and represent it in the, in the right way. And, and do you give a pep talk to the team as well? Is that part of it? I wouldn't say it's a standard. It depends on uh, where we are during the course of the season, mm -hmm. how the, the weekend before went, how the days go. Sure. But it is important from time to time, together with the drivers as well, together with Zach, uh, to make sure that especially after bad days, for example, to pump everyone up again yeah. and, and go again. How about you, Zach? As, as CEO of racing, how do you prepare for a race weekend? Uh, a lot of coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and stuff. yeah, I mean, you know, Andreas and I are uh, in, in constant uh, contact. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm kind of tend to focus more on the business, the commercial side, mm -hmm. the, the media side. So, you know, what, what guests do we have? Mm -hmm. What shareholders do we have? Mm -hmm. So um, I... Uh, I watch in a very uh, interested manner from uh, uh, 
sometimes pit wall, sometimes the, the garage. Yeah. Um, but I leave the, the, the racing to Andreas and, and the team and uh, tend to just kind of make sure that uh, our guests that are there are uh, well taken care of. Yeah. And, uh, and the activation activity that's mm -hmm. going on in the city uh, is, is all going according to plan. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so we've had a question from Jewel, who is from Germany. Uh, if there were to be a race between, <laughs> so Andreas, this is one for you. If there were to be a race between all team principals, who do you think would win? I'm guessing this would be in a car, but who do you think would win out of all the team principals? Well, there's team principals and some CEOs around. Uh, that Let's put them all together. Might be, CEOs might be fast. Uh, yeah. we'll from the other the team principals, well. I would say. I've seen some onboards from Toto around the Nordschleife, so I think he will mm. probably probably be quite uh, competitive and, ambi be, and ambitious. And ambitious. <laughs> Who would be the underdog? Who do you think might might just cinch it right at the end? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Also, for example, Christian, I think he has some racing experience yeah. as well, yeah. so he's, yeah. he will probably be. How do you think you guys would fare good. in the race? Do you think? I think Zach, obviously, you are you, you're a racing driver, so. All bets would be on you. Oh, well, I think T Toto and Christian are the only two, to my knowledge, that have racing experience. Okay. So, so it would be a fight I, between I the three of you. I think those would maybe? be, that could be your podium. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, so we have a question uh, which is uh, from Matthew, uh, who's in Canada, and is, as kids, who or what inspired you, or who or what inspires you now? Zach, I'll start with you. Uh, I get a lot of inspiration from a lot of different people. Um, in, in racing, I've been fortunate to, to meet a lot of the uber successful people. Uh, Ron Dennis, mm -hmm. uh, absolute legend of the, the sport. And uh, he and Monsur did an unbelievable job yeah. uh, building what is McLaren uh, today. So uh, certainly Ron and Monsur, uh, Roger Penske, mm -hmm. uh, especially if I look at the, the way he's combined racing and business. Yeah. Uh, he wins at everything that he does. He has great people around mm -hmm. him and he knows how to use motor racing to build his business and he knows how to use his business to build his motor racing. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I would say those are a, a couple specific to racing that there's a lot that uh, I do today that I've taken from, from watching them operate. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Andreas, what about you? Who's inspired you? Yeah, for me, it's not necessarily, I'd say, specific uh, people or persons. I was always, I always got inspired by uh, sports teams. Um, I always wanted to be part of sports teams as mm -hmm. well. And uh, that's something that still keeps me going uh, today. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I like to work uh, together with uh, with the team. I like to be part of uh, of the team. The special spirit you have within a sports team that yeah. that keeps me going. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, Formula One is the ultimate team sport, isn't it? So um, we have some quick fire questions for you now. Uh, so I'll ask you each of these questions, and it's just the first thing that comes into your head. So the first question is, Zach, I'll come to you first. Did you pass your driving test first time? In America, yes. In England, no. How many times here? Three. Three. It's a nightmare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Andreas, how about you? Did you pass your driving test first time? With the car, yes, and uh, that's all I want to say. Okay, <laughs> end of. Uh, race you're most looking forward to in the second half of the season, Zach? Austin. Austin, yeah, it's awesome, awesome atmosphere there. Andreas, what about you? Um, Spa Monza, these two I like. The two together. Iconic races. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Uh, and the best part of a race weekend, Zach? The start. The start, Andreas? For me, definitely the celebrations uh, in the garage after a good race. Amazing. Uh, we have, <laughs> so describe each other in one word. So Zach, if you could describe Andreas in one word. German. German, perfect. <laughs> to the point, yeah, absolutely. He's, definitely, he's, def he's definitely coming from the States, yeah, I can tell. Okay. Andreas, now it's your turn, one word to describe that. Um, yeah, racer. Racer. Racing guy. Perfect. Uh, your favourite F1 era, Zach? Uh, it'd have to be the one I grew up in, mm -hmm. so 80s. 80s, yeah, great era. Andreas, what about you? For me, definitely the 90s, because 90s. that's where I started to watch it with uh, some great battles of Michael against... Uh, yeah, yeah. Drivers also from McLaren. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, and Zach, this is one for you. Uh, would you get another tattoo? <laughs> Highly unlikely. <laughs> Andreas, would you join? Would you ever consider getting a tattoo? Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> 
<laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much both for your time. It's been incredible to talk to you here on this fan forum. Before we sign off, is there anything that you would like to say to the fans before we head into the shutdown? Andreas, I'll come to you first. Yeah. Hello, fans. Um, we are heading into the, the shutdown now for two weeks. Um, you have all seen uh, Fuller closely. Uh, the first half of the season was a a challenging one uh, with a difficult start, but I uh, was really pleased to see, together with your support, how the team was coming back strongly. Could uh, celebrate some highlights as well, including the podium, for example, of, of Lando in Imola. And uh, yeah, also brought some, some good upgrades uh, to the track that put us in a more competitive uh, position now. And uh, yeah, looking forward then after the break um, to have a strong second half of the season. We're only four parts uh, away from P4 in the Constructors' Championship. That's clearly the goal, the second half of the season, to achieve that. I think we have everything together with Lando and Daniel to, to do that. And uh, together with your support, I'm really looking forward to that. And I hope everyone is having a good break as well <laughs> on your side. And then see you on the other side of the shutdown. Thank you, Andreas. Zach, final word from you. Yeah, just building on what Andreas said, you guys and gals are the, uh, are the best fans in sport. Uh, we, we listen to you, we hear you cheering for us. We know uh, when we don't put together a good weekend uh, that you give us some great, great support and encouragement. Uh, you hold us to a, a high standard as we do our, ourselves, and so we're going to keep pushing. This sport is not easy. Uh, as Andrea said, it was a bit of a difficult start to the year, but feel like we're catching up and a lot of racing to go, and uh, confident we're going to get that uh, fourth place in the championship, which is just a step in the journey because, of course, uh, our real desire is to get to the top step and compete for the world championship and uh still got a ways to go to get there but that's the goal amazing uh thank you so much both of you it's been incredible to talk to you have a good rest uh in the two week shutdown and we'll see you on the other side Thank you so much for joining us on this Slipstream Fan Forum. It's been a huge pleasure to host you. And thank you to all of our incredible fans who submitted their questions as well. Now, if you want to stay involved, uh, please do follow us on social media and download the McLaren app for exclusive access to everything behind the scenes to do with the team. Now, as the team go into a two-week shutdown, we have a very special message just for you. Hey, it's Pato here. Hello everyone, it's Lando. Hi, it's Felix here. Hey guys, Daniel here. Cool. Emma and Tanner here, out in Sardinia. From all of us at McLaren, a big thank you for being part of the team. Without you, we wouldn't be here competing. And it's been an incredible journey over the last few years. And the future is looking brighter than ever for us and in motorsports in America. And we hope to see you at a track soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fearlessly forward.